Good evening. Good to see each of you back this evening. It turned out to be a pretty nice day today. Of course, the weather, the temperature seems better today, at least in my opinion. Been a little hot the last few days, a lot hot the last few days, however you want to put it. But it is good that we're able to come here this evening once again and to be able to study God's Word, to be able to worship Him, and to be able to strengthen one another. And I hope that each of us gain strength through our studies, through our worship of the Lord, through our, our efforts uh, to encourage one another. It is important that we do so. If you will, bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, as we again gather before you, we praise you, exalt you. Father, we ask that you will forgive us of any sins that would hinder our worship of you and strengthen us and help us to be faithful and true to you, Father. Help us to do what is right in your sight. Father, we pray that we will uh, be faithful to study your word, faithful to, to what your word teaches us, that we will be obedient uh, to your will, that we will encourage one another in these efforts and always, Father, that we will encourage others uh, through our example, through teaching your word. We pray that we can bring others to the truth, Father, before it is everlasting too late. Father, we are so thankful for your word, which does guide us and, and teaches us the way that we should go. Father, we pray that we will always serve you in a pleasing manner, Father. It is in Christ's most precious and holy name we pray. Amen. This morning we spoke about forgiveness. Looking, of course, at Psalm 32, a rather short psalm, but in all honesty and, and certainly in my viewpoint, a very beautiful psalm, a very thoughtful psalm, one that should be encouraging to us, one that should, uh, if we spend but a little time in it, uh, teach us a great deal of information and, and teach us about, as we noticed in, in verses 1 and 2 of that text, the, the blessings, uh, indeed the happiness that we derive uh, from the forgiveness that God gives us. Seeing the harm in verses 3 through 5 of sin and, and, and the weight of, of, of that sin and, and the need, verses 6 through 7, for all of us to have that forgiveness. And then, of course, and I know, as I, I mentioned in the lesson, there is some discussion, some debate on who uh, is, in fact, stating, uh, giving this instruction in verses 6 and 7. I believe, as I said, that it is, in fact, David that is saying it. We know he wrote this by inspiration, but, but I believe that it is David that is addressing uh, that, that he will uh, give this instruction, verses 8 and 9, I think I said 6 and 7, but uh, need for all to, to in fact, uh, repent, is what verses 6 and 7 uh, teaches. And then, of course, the instruction there in verses 8 and 9, and, and then in 10 and 11, uh, continuing these thoughts. We talked about this and saw, and I hope and, that we have a better understanding of forgiveness and and the forgiveness that we need and the forgiveness that God gives to us. Now, we didn't talk about it. I, I mentioned to Olivia, of course, that there were some things that I had intended to bring out in that lesson. And, and then, uh, as is usually the case, somehow, some way or another, there's always something that you don't present. Either you intended to and forgot or you didn't include it, didn't, didn't think about it until you uh, afterwards. I don't know how many times that has happened, but... But it's true that there are some things that we did not cover, and, and I'm not too worried about it because I know we have covered some of those things already in other lessons on previous occasions uh, as far as things that are required for us to have forgiveness, including, as Jesus taught there in Matthew chapter 6, the need, in fact, for us to forgive others. We are going to be looking this evening, if you will, turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 17. Luke, chapter 17. And our, our lesson, as I indicated this morning after the sermon, uh, is on the idea of increase 
our faith, which we find in verse 5 of Luke 17. Now, this, this lesson is, has been planned for uh, as far as it has is, is been on the schedule. We are looking at some things that, that we have stated these were things we we're going to look at. And I'm glad, brothers and sisters, that we are, are looking at these things because they go hand in hand with the things we left off with that we were looking at this morning. Indeed, we, we were looking at the, the subject of forgiveness. And we begin here in verse 1, and we see how in the first two verses that Jesus points out the, the importance of not offending others, not causing others, in fact, to stumble in, in their walk with Christ in their, their lives. We see in verses 1 and 2 of, of Luke 17, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Brothers and sisters, we need to be very cautious about how we interact with our brothers and sisters. We need to be very cautious about how we interact with Christians, with others, that we are not causing others to stumble. Of course, Paul in the letter to the Romans would address, of course, the weak brother and, and vice versa, the stronger brother, not to cause one, not to cause the other to stumble. And, and so the Bible does teach us the need to be very cautious about how we do interact one with another. And Jesus here is instructing about our behavior. He goes on in verses 3 through 4, which really teaches, really deals with what we talked about this morning as far as the subject of forgiveness. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again, to thee saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. So we see in verses 1 and 2, not to cause the other to be offended, not to offend others. And then we see the need, in fact, to forgive others who in fact do trespass against us, who do sin against us. And, and we understand there are many texts that teach us on this important subject. We, we look, we know in Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 23, then in, in Matthew chapter 18, beginning with verse 15, that Jesus deals with that, that sinning against one another. We've discussed those texts and, and quite a bit, and so we'll not really delve into them uh, other than just to bring this out, brothers and sisters, that if you offend me, I have the responsibility to go to you. And if I offend you, I have the responsibility to go to you. And vice versa. Strictly uh, putting it, very plainly putting it, those two texts, there in Matthew chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 18, teaches us that we as Christians have a reciprocal responsibility to, to approach one another if we do offend one another. If we have something against one another. And it is important that we understand that is how the Bible teaches us to respond. And Jesus here is teaching His disciples and through the Word of God today, <coughs> teaching us that we need to be prepared to forgive others. Now in conjunction with our lesson this morning and in what we, we just pointed out, we know that our Lord in in teaching the model prayer there in Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 and following teaches of course the the importance of forgiving others for if I will not forgive the other then I need not expect God to grant me the forgiveness that I desire from him and brothers and sisters I assure you I need that forgiveness every one of us does each and every one of us needs his forgiveness I'm not saying that you are sitting here this evening and, and you are sinning in anything you're doing. I'm not saying that you have sinned today. I don't know what you have and have not done. I can't see everything that you do. I can't understand, read everything you think. I don't know. And, and you don't know 
what goes through my mind, what my behavior is. But brothers and sisters, we know, as we pointed out this morning, Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, that all have sinned. We all have need of forgiveness. And therefore, we better make certain we are prepared to forgive others. And Jesus here instructs His disciples of this. And, and we take note, of course, that He says that if thy brother trespass against thee, there in verse 3, verse three rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day. Now stop right there. Let us understand that what is being said there is not literally meaning seven times. It might draw your attention to, to Peter's words about uh, this very thought seven times. Seventy times seven, right? Four hundred ninety times. Four hundred ninety first time and I'm free to hold against you talked about, of course, that is not talking about literally. And in here, it is not talking about literally. We know, of course, that in, in certain uh, in, in symbolic language, seven is often viewed as the perfect number. And so when the Lord here says seven times, He is in fact teaching us. He was teaching them and He is now teaching us in His Word no matter how many times, no matter how much offense is given, we must be prepared to forgive others. It's interesting, and, and I was reading up on, on this, this thought there in verse 5 from which we take our, our theme from tonight, their title from. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. So the idea appears, at least, and this is, seems to be the consensus that, that I could find in, in, on this as well, that the idea seems to be that perhaps the apostles weren't quite sure they had enough of faith to in fact carry out what the Lord was instructing them to do. In relation to, of course, the, the offenses, and especially in case of forgiving others. Now, I must say that I, I, a couple of commentaries I read, I have one of them here with me, the Gospel Advocate, also with Kaufman, uh, reading those. They, they have the view that this is most assuredly the idea of the faith here is talking about the miraculous faith. And I suppose they get this from Jesus' next words where he goes into this idea of the miraculous thing. I question that, brothers and sisters, and here's why. Does it take a miracle to forgive others? If it does, we're in trouble because we know 1 Corinthians 13 teaches us the miraculous has ceased. When that which is perfect is come, that which is perfect being, the perfect law of liberty being the complete uh, written word, when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. We know there in 1 Corinthians and either 8 or 10, I think it's 10, but, but you can go there and read 1 Corinthians 13. It's not a long chapter, and you'll come across the exact verse for certain. But, but I question, brothers and sisters, whether this is talking about miraculous faith. Yes, it is most assured that Jesus then turns to the miraculous and addresses the idea of their faith in relation to miraculous ability. But again, it does not take a miracle to forgive someone. Though sometimes it appears we make it so. But they, they ask for Him to increase their faith. And it is at this time, notice what our Lord said to them. If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou transplanted, or be thou planted in the seed. And it would obey you. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him, By and by, when he, he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet. And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me till I have eaten 
and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Matthew 17, I believe it is, brothers and sisters. We see that, that light, light illustration, except our Lord used the idea of speaking to a mountain. So you can say to this mountain, and, and you can move a mountain. Brothers, we understand, sisters, we, we understand that, that to do those things, to literally speak to a tree and then it would get up and move itself, this would take a miracle. This would be a supernatural thing that would occur. We don't see trees get up and walk around. So it would be a miraculous thing, but it is my thoughts, brothers and sisters, and, and you read it and come to your own conclusion on this. This is a matter of my opinion as to the relationship here that our Lord is exaggerating the point and making the point that, that, that they're asking for their faith to be increased in so far as they're, being, they're actually forgiving others and they're not offending others. And he's making the point of how great things they could do even if they had even so much as the faith of a mustard seed. Which apparently is a very small seed. And so if they could do that with that small amount of faith, do they really need a, a lot of faith, a greater faith, to be able to, in fact, Forgive others. And then he goes on, of course, as we read, to point out the fact that, that they should not overly exalt themselves if they are doing these things, if they are performing these miracles, but they are simply doing. And, and notice we often use verse 10 here as we read, so likewise, you and you shall have done all those things which are commanded you say we are unprofitable servants we have done that which was our duty to do so I, I don't know how many times I've used that text and I've used it in relation to other things that we are required to do and certainly I don't see a problem with doing that no matter what I'm doing if I'm doing God's will if I'm doing what he has told me to do no matter what that command is I have nothing to brag about I'm simply doing that which the Lord has told me. I haven't merited my salvation. I haven't merited any rewards, any blessings that I have. I'm simply doing as a servant what I have been told to do. But in context here, brothers and sisters, we go back there to the first four verses where our, our Lord is teaching His disciples and teaching us about not giving offense and also about forgiveness. When I have watched how I act with my brothers and sisters, when I have forgiven my brother, my sister, I don't look and I don't run and say what great things I've done. I simply obey what my Lord and my Savior, in fact, commands me to do. And we need to understand that. But our lesson is specifically brothers and sisters, on that phrase, increase our faith. The apostles here are making this, and they're doing so as a group. Increase our faith. Almost as, and they're speaking to our Lord at this point, but it, it almost seems as a prayer, does it not? And certainly, uh, and again, they're speaking directly to him, so uh, whether you want to call it a prayer or not, it, it seems to be a conversation, uh, a discussion. Uh, you know, that Jesus is instructing them, and now they're making the request of him. But increase our faith. Brothers and sisters, you and I today, we, we don't have our Lord and Savior sitting here uh, with us where we can carry on the conversation as they were able to do. We do have to pray. We you know we are instructed as Jesus there in Matthew chapter 6 we're instructed we are to pray to the Father and there is who we direct our prayers to and I know there are those who have disagreements on this subject but but brothers and sisters when we read what the Bible teaches us we see we are instructed to in fact pray to the Father and 
This is what Jesus, in fact, gave us not only the command to do so, the instructions, however you want to put it, he also gave us the example to do so. And we ought to pray that our faith, in fact, be increased. In James chapter 1, James deals with another issue of, of making requests, shall we say, of, of the need to grow in another area, and that is in, in wisdom there in James 1. And we notice in verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, what? Let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Now, brothers and sisters, where does our wisdom, the wisdom we are talking about here, where does our wisdom come from? Studying God's Word, from thinking on these things, from learning what His Word teaches us, how we ought to do. If I want wisdom, I have to study His Word. If I want understanding, those two are often linked together. Wisdom and understanding. If I want either of those, then I have to spend time in His Word. And brothers and sisters, if I want faith, where does my faith come from? My faith, the faith, comes from Romans 10 and verse 17 tells us it comes from His Word. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If I want my faith to be increased, I ought to pray to the Father that my faith would be increased, that He will give me greater faith. But brothers and sisters, I also understand that I have a responsibility in, in that request as well, in that I must look to where it comes from. God does not, and we know again there in verses 6 and following of Luke 17 that he, he turns to that miraculous of those miraculous abilities that they had that you and I don't have but, but in relation to faith increasing our faith it doesn't come by some miraculous thing there are those who profess that faith is, is that, that salvation is some kind of miracle certainly we see that Christ died on the cross and rose again miracle we see that there were things that were done, miracles that were performed, these things that were carried out. These were miracles. But brothers and sisters, you and I are not saved. You and I do not come to salvation through some miracle. We come through salvation from hearing God's Word, believing His Word, obeying His Word, obeying His will, doing what He instructs us, in fact, to do, that we might be saved. My faith, isn't derived from some miracle. So I don't go to the Father and ask Him to increase my faith through some miracle because that is not how He chooses for those things to work. I, I ask Him, and I ought to ask Him, we all ought to ask Him that He increase our faith. But brothers and sisters, if faith comes from the Word of God, more faith comes from the Word of God, right? The more I study the more I spend time in His Word, the more I learn about His will, the more I find, indeed, that my faith is increased. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. We are told, of course, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We are told to study the, the Word of God, to spend time in it. We know in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, we know that, of course, Joshua was told, in fact, to do so. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The psalmist deals with this very thing in, in the first psalm, in, in Psalm 1 and, and the first three verses. We know that the psalmist 
David, I believe, is, is said to have written this particular psalm as well as many others. He says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You remember Joshua in Joshua 1 and verse 8. He's told to do this, and then what? His way may be prosperous. Joshua, of course, took over from Moses. Moses is preparing. He's been told he's not going to go into the promised land. He's been told to, to pass on, and he does pass on some of his, his abilities. He, he, he Passes on his mantle, so to speak, his his mission to carry the people into Israel to Joshua, who had been that faithful uh, right hand man, so to speak, that faithful servant, if you will, that f faithful apprentice, if you will, and he he does, and and Joshua is being told, he, he is told in context there to be courageous. He's told to to spend time in the Word, to make sure that the law, the Word that he was given by God through Moses that he was, he was to meditate upon these things, spend time in these things, and his way would be prosperous. And here the psalmist is instructing and, and, and instructing us through the written word that we ought to delight in the law of the Lord, to meditate on it day and night, and just as surely as Joshua was told his way would be prosperous. We are told in verse 3 that the man who does so, and ladies, sisters, this includes you, if you do so, same thing applies, that we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. If we want to do well in serving the Lord, we must spend time in His Word. If we want our faith increased, we must spend time in His Word. Our faith is ought to be a desire that we be increased. We often look, and we've looked in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, or excuse me, 2 Peter chapter 1, not 2 Corinthians, 2 Peter chapter 1. And we know, of course, the Christian graces are dealt with there in verses 5 through 11. And, and we often look at those things and we discuss the various Christian graces, if you will. Brothers and sisters, the very first thing mentioned in that text is what? Add to your what? Faith. Faith is a prerequisite. Faith is a foundation. Faith is the beginning, brothers and sisters. But does that mean that I have faith, now I just have to focus on all these others? It doesn't, does it? I still need to grow in my faith. I still need to, to continue to build that faith up. The apostles looked and they saw in themselves a lacking a lacking there in 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 Luke 17 and, and I can't help but notice this brothers and sisters and perhaps you do as well that they saw a lacking in themselves our Lord is telling them to do these things and they saw the need to be increased in faith that they could do these very things Noticing especially there in verses 3 and 4 the need to, to forgive. Jesus is making the point that they don't really need their faith increase. They need to obey. Hey, imagine if, if, if I could... I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a sick of mine tree. Some people kind of get it mixed up with the sycamore tree. Apparently these are two different trees from what I understand. I don't know if I'd recognize a sycamine tree. He might be him, but uh, he say no. So if he doesn't know, I know I'm in trouble. But 
sycamine tree. I, I don't know that I recognize one. I do know, you know, various trees. I know a pine tree. When I see a pine tree, I know a pine tree. Now, I recognize oak trees to a great extent. I, there's an elm tree out, out here by the house. You know, I see various trees, and, and some I recognize more. I definitely recognize, again, a pine tree. I, I, I grew up around those. I know what they look like. If, if I have the ability to look at a, a pine tree, I'll use one from back home. If, if I can look at a pine tree and I can say, get up and go over here and get planted over here in the lake, and it gets up and walks over there and plants itself in the lake, if I can do that, which our Lord says that they had even the grain of a must, the faith of a mustard seed, they were able to do that. If they could do that much, with even that little faith, how much faith does it take to, in fact, forgive others? How much faith does it take to watch how we act toward our brothers and sisters, toward others? The truth is, in, in many things, and, and I, I'm not saying this in, in, to make light of, of the very point that I'm trying to make, with that we should seek to increase our faith, for we should. But my point, I, I do want us to understand that oftentimes our problem isn't that we, we lack faith. The problem is we simply aren't obeying the devils believed and trembled. The devils had faith. They knew who Jesus was. Yeah, they weren't willing to obey. Were they? Oh, they, we understand, for example, Jesus said, come out, and they'd come out. But they weren't willing to take those steps of obedience, of, of, of doing the Lord's will. There are many people who know the truth. A conversation just recently, uh, we were talking, uh, some, some individuals and I were talking about atheists. And you've heard me point out that atheists, uh, you know, the question was posed from one to another, of, well, why would this person who professes not to believe in any of this spend any time in studying this? And I, I made the point that there are many atheists who know the Word of God as far as knowing what it says better than the Christians, people who profess to be Christian. The problem is they're not going to obey it. They don't believe it's real, really true. They learn it. They read it. They study it. They, they look at these things. But what their desire is, is to learn it so they can tell you how you're wrong. Or they can refute your belief. They can take away from you what you do believe. So the problem often isn't that, that we don't believe we think about, you remember the question, who is my neighbor? This individual, of course, was asking this question, why? We're told why. That he might justify himself. Problem wasn't that he didn't know what he was to do. Problem was he wasn't willing to do it. And perhaps the apostles here, in some way, they look at this and they say, oh, this is just too much. Increase our faith that we may be able to do this. And Jesus is telling them, if you, if you had a little faith, you could do this great thing. You have enough faith to do it. You need to do it. Do what you have, in fact, been told to do. Brothers and sisters, again, it may seem in, in saying that, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm going against the very thing I, I'm presenting tonight the need to seek for our faith to increase. We do need to seek for our faith to increase, brothers and sisters, but we also need to act upon what faith we do have. We need to be obedient to what we profess that we believe. Truth is, I've seen too many people who profess to believe in the Word of God and yet they are not obedient, profess to believe in Christ and yet they won't follow His teachings profess to be Christians, brothers and sisters, and yet they live like the world. 
Are we doing that? Are we failing to show our faith to present before our Lord that we do in fact believe? Brothers and sisters, we, we need to be obedient. And indeed, we ought to daily seek to have our faith increased. Seek our, uh, through prayer these efforts. Seek through spending time in His Word that this will be carried out. That our faith will increase. And that we will therefore have that more of that active, obedient faith doing as God would have us do. If you're here this evening, if you haven't obeyed the gospel, I would encourage you to think on doing so. Perhaps you look and you say, you know, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and, and indeed we're told we must believe that He is who He says He is. We must believe in Christ. We, of course, as we've been pointing out tonight, we get that faith from this Word, from His, His Word. We hear the Word. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Maybe you say, you know, I've heard that. I know that. I do believe. We must repent of our sins. Confess Christ to be the Son of God and be baptized, immersed in water for the remission of one's sins. Maybe you, you, you've, you've heard the Word. You believe. Maybe you need to take the rest of the steps. Or maybe you've gone even further. Maybe you, you are penitent and you know you, you've done wrong and you're, you're willing to to repent of your sins, turning away from those things. You need to confess Christ. Maybe you say, well, you know, I have no problem there. And then let's baptize you. You haven't obeyed the gospel, I would encourage you to do so. Or maybe you're a Christian. Maybe you, you are have already obeyed the gospel. And I look, and I know most of us certainly have, already obeyed the gospel. If you're here and you've obeyed the gospel, maybe you, you look at yourself and you know, well, you know, I just haven't been what I need to be. Maybe something that was said tonight, or maybe this morning, or maybe unrelated to what we've looked at today. Maybe some sin is separating you from, from God. He's promised, if we're faithful to confess our faults, He's faithful to forgive us. As John points out there in chapter 1, verse 9 of 1 John. And remember what we talked about this morning. The blessings, blessedness, the happiness that comes from having our sins forgiven. You're here. You have need. We encourage you. We plead with you. Come while we stand. Come while we sing. Don't let the cross.